Do you think that sex and gender are the same thing? Even if not in humans, do you think so in animals? Well, prepare to have... Oh, hold on. I need a third question. Uh, what's the capital of text? Anyways, prepare to have your illusion shattered. Let's start off by defining biological sex. This can be hard to pin down, but in humans, the females have XX chromosomes and the males have XY. This is a poor definition of women, as evidenced by the fact that the subreddit r slash 2X chromosomes includes men with Kleinfelter syndrome, but does not include women with Turner syndrome. But I would argue that this definition is perfectly sound, because biological sex is purely a reproductive term, and unless you have either XY or XX chromosomes, you are sterile, and you really shouldn't even be considered to have biological sex at all. Repeat, this is how it works in humans. In other animals, it's different, particularly in butterflies and some birds. The ones with a unique chromosome are the females, and the ones without it are males. To avoid confusion, these were creatively named the W and Z chromosomes, with females possessing a W chromosome and males lacking one. So it seems like the definition of biological male and female must be morphological rather than genetic. Biological females are capable of producing eggs or their analog, and males are capable of producing sperm or its analog. But wait, if you happen to be sterile by a genetic condition, does that mean you're no longer a male or female? Well, the best definition would probably be that a biological female is an organism possessing the sex chromosomes that, in that species, are indicative of the production of oocytes, and a biological male would be, I'm not reading all that, the other one. Anyway, there's no real way to ease into this. Today I'm talking about the Dami Mami Volcano Lizard. Salazzle's description in the Pokédex says that it builds up a reverse harem of male salandit. This intrigued me for two reasons. We can skip the first one, but the more important one is that that isn't how sexual selectivity works. It's clear what they were going for here, how like lions and elephant seals and a couple of other animals have a group of females that they compete with each other for. So somebody thought, hey, why not sex swap them? And here's why not. Simply put, a male can successfully mate with arbitrarily many females, and its reproductive success is directly proportional to how many, so it's incentivized to mate with as many as possible. A female, on the other hand, can only successfully mate with one male at a time, so it gains no advantage from associating with multiple males. Additionally, from a naturally selective standpoint, a female is going to want to mate with the strongest male, which means that females encourage competition by selecting the male with the characteristics that allow him to win competition. Ah! you say, but the science-denying left wants to cancel me for dating multiple women at once. First of all, you're not dating multiple women, the influencer you watch is, and he's probably not doing that. But more importantly, humans are monogamous. You can tell, because we don't really have sexual dimorphism. And more importantly, relationships are about gender, not sex, and gender is exclusive to humans because gender is a social construct, and sorry crocodile joker, but reptiles don't live in a society. So how do we explain the Salazal harems? Well, Pokemon uses gender, not sex, to define its ratios. This is most likely a translation error because the Japanese word seibetsu refers to both sex and gender, but they translated it as gender because sex can also mean have sex, etc. But let's not knock the possibility. Umbreon and a couple of other Pokemon level up based on friendship, which is also a social construct. It's not impossible to imagine female gender as a prerequisite for leveling up, especially in other Pokemon with similar gender-based leveling like Gallade, which is kind of based on gender or old. And the Pokédex does say that only the females can level up because the males are too malnourished from giving the females all their food, not for a biological reason. And more importantly, the female gender is only called the female gender because it's the one that for most of history has only ever been known as being exclusive to the female sex. So it still has to be the norm for females to have the reverse harems. And besides, I'm still skeptical that the lizards even have a concept of gender. So, does the real-life analog of Salazal give any clues? <sighs> well, let's talk about Parthenogenesis. Salazal is clearly meant to be a whip-tail lizard. Why doesn't it learn tail whip, though? Because tail whip is actually a poor translation of tail wag, which makes more sense. Whip tail lizards are all female, because they reproduce through parthenogenesis, where after meiosis, the haploid cells in the egg reduplicate their genetic material, instead of having the other half filled in by a male. This is unhelpful, not least because whip tail lizards have to have gay sex to stimulate the laying of eggs, and salazzles are on site with each other, but it does bring up an important point. What's up with the males? 
Well, the entry for Salandit says that the reason none of the males evolve is because they give all of their food to the females and are too malnourished to evolve. Game Freak, get your science together. What kind of a BS excuse is that? Just want more food! Okay, I'm going to ignore that speculation because lest we forget, you do not receive the Pokédex fully filled in and you, a 10-year-old child, have to write your own observations. I'll assume we have something like a dominance hierarchy with males at the bottom, the female Salandits, or beta females in the middle, and alpha females females on top, and then off to the side we have the sigma females who reproduce through parthenogenesis. The females are bigger than the males, but that shouldn't come as a surprise. In primitive species, the females are always bigger, because it takes more energy to produce and feed eggs or live birth or whatever. Males tend to be larger in mammals because of competition, but for Salazzle that would only reinforce the size advantage of females. But all this has done is serve to reinforce the initial assumptions that we made about a reverse harem. We still are looking for a scenario where the actual biological rules aren't reversed, but the communal roles are. So, what about seahorses? The males give birth there, right? Well, if the males really gave birth, then they wouldn't be called males, and seahorses in general don't really give birth. Let's define some terms. If an animal lays eggs, it's oviparous, and if it gives live birth, it's viviparous. Now, seahorses are ovoviviparous, which means that they wait until the eggs have hatched to lay them, giving them the appearance of live birth. Specifically, the male fertilizes eggs within the female, now, that's what we in the biz call sex, and the female lays them into a pouch emerging from the front of the male. This is promising, especially considering how the male is the one putting in the time and effort to produce a placenta to feed the newborns, and the female is free to do whatever. I mean, chickens can produce an unfertilized egg every day. Unfortunately, most studies on seahorse mating are irrelevant because seahorses are monogamous like humans, but an unlikely hero will arise. Pipefish are a close relative of seahorses, and unlike the seahorses, they are polygamous. And yeah, we get exactly what you would expect. The gulf pipefish exhibits classical polyandry, with the greatest asymmetry in reproductive roles, as quantified by variances in mating success, between males and females, yet documented in any system. Well, analyze this system, because we got ourselves an answer. Here's the truth. Female salazzles, that was redundant, produce unfertilized eggs. The males fertilize them and incubate the baby or whatever, but maybe they have a pouch, I don't know. Point is, they are matrotrophic, but the male provides nutrients, so I guess patrotrophic. The female can mate with arbitrarily many males because she only has to produce the unfertilized eggs, not take care of them. The males have to take care of the eggs and can't realistically mate with multiple females. And therefore, females compete with each other for control of the male harems. So, while I was editing this video, I found out that it could have been made entirely redundant by a single Google search for the word polyandry. Now, it is nice to know that the conclusions that I came to based on my research are the same as the ones observed in actual polyandrous species, and if I was trying to promote something on this channel, it would probably be that if you can't figure something out, you can, like, look at sources and try and figure it out. Oh, and before any of you ask, I made this video because I have a kink, not because it was finals week and I already had something written on sexual selectivity. What else was I going to say? Uh... Hello, everyone. Ah. How are you? Fine, thank you. Oh my god.